my friends, and welcome to The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Today is episode one, The Pattern. And I'm Kathleen Dames. I will be your guide through the 12 episodes in which we will knit the Solstice Cardi together. So, The Pattern. By now, hopefully you have your copy of The Pattern. If you don't, visit kathleendames.com slash the sweater and sign up for the newsletter. Once you've signed up and received a confirmation email, you should get a welcome email from me and in there is a link to download the PDF for your copy of the pattern. The Solstice Cardi. So, page one on all my patterns is the hero shot, the really the pretty picture, or the beauty shot, a couple of other detail shots, although the hero shot usually includes enough details, and then what's called romance copywear, so to give you a flavor of the pattern. You don't need to print this unless you want to see my face all the time, um, but it really it, it tells the story about the pattern uh, visually. Then we have, for getting started, the most important page is page two. And here we have the finished size, the materials list, your gauge, my thanks to the people who helped me make this pattern possible, a bunch of notes that they're not quite things that fit properly in the pattern itself, but they're my hints and tips that can help you make a better sweater. And then we have the abbreviations and stitches list in this little box. Um, if there were charts, they might be on this page, they might be on a subsequent page. Um, but this is a pretty straightforward pattern in terms of the kind of stitches we're gonna be using. And then last but certainly not least, perhaps the most important is the schematic. And this shows you the finished measurements of all the pieces in the pattern. Um, and this is what you're going to refer to when you know your measurements uh, to figure out what size you're going to knit. So this is where we're at now, right? We need to talk about measurements. And the great thing about knitting your own sweater is it's nobody else's business but your own what your measurements are. Um, you all are going to know all of my measurements because I'm going to measure Jane now. And, uh, but nobody, you don't need to tell me your measurements. You don't even need to write them down. You can just circle the size that you want to knit of the pattern. Okay. But the great thing is when you're knitting your own sweater, there are no tags. There's nothing that says some arbitrary number of what size you are. Okay. So to measure Jane, we need a tape measure and I'm going to take the sweater off of Jane. So when you're measuring yourself, you don't need to get naked. <laughs> I don't recommend that. Um, but you should put on the kind of garments you would wear under your sweater. At the very least, you should have the kind of bra that, that makes you feel good, that fits you nicely, that does everything you want. Um, I often wear this sweater when I wear the Solstice Cardi. I either wear it like with a little camisole or a v-neck and I wear it buttoned up or I might wear it unbuttoned over a dress or a longer t-shirt. So um, the main measurement that we need to be aware of here is the full bust measurement. So that's exactly what it sounds like, your full bust. And I get a 38. I don't think you can see that, but that's, she's a 38, I'm, I'm 38 inch bust. Uh, the difference between Jane and I is that I have a much shorter waist than she does. And my waist is a little thicker too, um, but that's okay. Now you know all these things about me, but I don't need to know that about you. That's up to you. That's your information. You are the boss of your knitting. You're in charge. So, the main, the main number that we need to be aware of is the bust measurement, and it's 38. Now, if you look at the pattern, it says size 36 inch with two inches of negative ease. So that means I knit the size 36 to go around 38 inches. And the great thing about knitting is that it stretches. I don't want it to stretch a lot, at least not with this sweater, um, but it stretches a little and it is flexible and we're taking advantage of that with this sweater. I wanna encourage you to try making a fitted sweater. Now you don't need to do it with negative ease. You can do it with zero or I'd say up to maybe two inches of positive ease. And that would be like, let's say you have a 42 inch bust. 
you might feel more comfortable knitting the 44 inch size. Um, but I really want to encourage you to, to give it a go, to give it a shot. Um, because a fitted sweater looks great. And we all have parts of ourselves that we want to hide and parts that we want to um, accentuate. And this is one of those sweaters that this is, this is what I want to accentuate. Up here, the V-neck brings the attention right up to your face. It fits great here and you know, I'm happy with what I have up here. Not happy with down here and so that's a much more, um, there isn't a whole lot going on down below. Um, so there we go. There we go. Now she's back and dressed again. When I'm talking about fit, I'm always reminded of this episode of The Simpsons from oh, a long time ago. And uh, I think it was called Simpson and Delilah. And Homer gets uh, a promotion. He's suddenly grown hair and everybody thinks he's amazing. And um, he gets this assistant, Carl. And Carl, Carl's brilliant. I don't know why Carl's an assistant. He should be running the place, but he knows all those sort of little secrets um, that make you a better you. And he takes Homer to buy a suit and the tailor is measuring Homer and Homer's trying to suck everything in and, and you know, try and make his body a better version of himself. And Carl notices and he says to Homer, you let it all hang out. And then he points to the tailor and he says, you conceal it. And that's the thing, we're gonna be our own tailors. If you know that you have a thick waist, you don't have to do the second set of decreases. If you know that you don't have as big a bust, you don't have to do as many increases. If you know that you want longer sleeves, you can knit longer sleeves. You are the boss of your knitting. You can be in charge and you can do it. It's not scary, I promise, I promise you can do it. I wrote the pattern with two-thirds length sleeves, finishing at the high hip. This fits me. This is what I wanted. But you're the boss of your knitting. If you want longer sleeves, you can do it. I would just say knit a couple more rows between your increases um, to sort of spread them out over the sleeve. Uh, you can make a longer, um, make this longer if you wanted to hit lower down on your hip. It hits right about here. Um, in that case, you might want to add a few more rows between the decreases. You might want to do a few more rows from the end of the decreases to the beginning of the increases. And I'm going to encourage you, when you think you're ready to start the increases, to hold it up to your body and you want it to come right up under your bust because we're going to do the decreases really fast. They're going to happen in, in eight rows. And um, so this should hit right under the bust and then you will get a sweater that fits great and is nice and snug around here. So um, the other thing about this pattern is that the measurements are based off of the Craft Yarn Council's um, suggestions for average body measurements. Uh, I don't decrease as much at the waist as the actual measurements would decrease, so there's, there's room there for everyone. Um, but generally these are based on, on the Craft Yarn Council measurements, as are most patterns that you will find out there. Ease. So ease is the difference, positive or negative, between your measurements and your sweater's measurements. When you have negative ease, it, um, the sweater is smaller than your body and it stretches over your curves. When you have positive ease, it's bigger and it stands away from your body a little, and that's fine. Um, and zero ease should fit exactly, should be exactly the measurements, uh, and the sweater and your body measurements would be the same. So. Materials. This sweater was knit in Julie Asselin's Stella, which um, is a great yarn, it's a sparkle yarn, I love it. Uh, but of course, when I decided to knit a second one, I wanted to do something a little different. And my friend Karen at uh, Round Table Yarns dyed up this gorgeous Camelot yarn in the Orkney colorway. 
And Camelot is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's a fingering weight yarn. These skeins are 100 grams and they are 435 yards or 398 meters. And so that's perfect for me. I'm gonna knit another 36 inch size. And so I need about 800 yards. And that's one of the things you'll notice in my patterns. I try, don't always succeed, but I try. Um, in my patterns, I try to include not only the number of skeins that you would need of the chosen yarn that the sample was knitted, but I also try and give approximate yardage estimates so that when you're substituting yarn, as I'm sure many of you are, um, you'll be able to figure out if you have enough of a given yarn. Um, so like I said, I need 800 yards of uh, my chosen yarn. I have a little more than that, so I have some wiggle room, which is nice. Uh, and so if you're looking at fingering weight yarn, you want to look uh, for a wool yarn. I highly recommend wool. As I said in um, the recent newsletter note I sent out to you guys about yarn, go with wool on this. It's good and flexible. It's easy to find. Um, I, you could certainly knit this in linen or cotton and I'm sure be very happy with it, but that's, let's do that if you're making another one, okay? Um, so, the yarn. Next we have the needle and um, I used a US 6 and uh, this is a Haya Haya I think and I like these needles. They're a, like a smooth um, aluminum. They're lightweight and their tips are not too pointy, not too blunt, which is great. Now in the pattern I say you need a 24 inch or longer circular needle. To be honest with you, I knit this with a 40 inch circular, maybe 39. Is it 39? I can't remember. Um, I, you can knit this on a 24. You couldn't knit this on a 16 inch, but if you have a longer needle, go ahead and use it. Don't get yourself another needle. The other reason I like a 40 inch needle is that um, if necessary, I can also use it to do magic loop. Now, um, I will be knitting the sleeves flat as it is in the pattern. Um, I'll be knitting the sleeves flat. That way the gauge of the sleeves matches exactly because we're doing the same technique with the same needle matches the body. Um, if your gauge isn't that different between flat and in the round, you certainly could knit the sleeves in the round. Um, and I wouldn't change the stitch count or anything, just leave it as is. Sometimes um, people will say you need to take away a stitch or two, but I wouldn't bother. Um, but I really do recommend knitting both the sleeves and the body in the, with the same needle in the same technique, flat. Um, because it's a cardigan, you want to be able to unbutton it and I don't want to steek this yarn. I want to just, when I'm done, I want to be done. Uh, okay, so we've got our yarn and our needles. Markers, now I list two kinds of markers. And the first kind, when I say markers, I mean what most of us think as a marker, a ring marker. Um, these are my little sheep from, um, and Tudor, I have other ring markers. There are your basic sort of clover um, or Bates needles, I mean, markers. So those are ring markers and they go between stitches. And when you get to them, you know you have to do something. And that is groovy. The other kind, and it just fell down, hold on. Uh, the other kind of markers are um, removable markers and they are like a, a safety pin but they're what are called coilless safety pins because that coil that makes the safety pin uh, have a little circle at the bottom that can get caught in your yarn and that's no fun um, so i use these this looks like a little a little edison bulb maybe um, but they're basically a safety pin and these get placed into the stitch um, so that you're marking the actual stitch. And that's important because we will be doing things where we need to know the center stitch for the raglan lines. These are, this is a really delicate raglan line. We do it all with the center double decrease. And so we mark that stitch. Uh, the same thing here, we are doing our decreases for the waist shaping around one center stitch. And then when we get up to the increases, we do increases at both sides of that stitch. So we want that stitch to be marked. Um, and the great thing is, of course, that removable markers can be removed. Next, um, stitch holders are waste yarn. Let's see if I have any waste yarn in here. I do, I have a tiny sample of um, 
This is just a worsted weight acrylic yarn. I have a big skein of it uh, in my stash. And what I like about using an acrylic, um, you can also use cotton, but it won't uh, stick to your wool. And the worsted weight means um, it's big enough to hold your stitches and keep them open enough for uh, down the line. The reason we need the waist yarn is we're going to put stitches for the underarm from the body and the sleeve on waist yarn. And at the very end, we will weave them together using Kitchener stitch. And that will make a nice seamless transition from the body to the sleeve. It's much more comfortable than doing something like a three needle bind off or binding off the stitches and sewing them together. Um, you can use stitch markers here, but the nice thing about the waist yarn is that it's flexible. And so um, you can try the sweater on. And it's also easier when you're joining the body to the sleeves, having the flexibility of the waist yarn holding the stitches rather than a, um, a hard stitch holder will make it easier to navigate around. Okay, so next thing we need is a tapestry needle. I keep mine in my beautiful little uh, Shaker Workshops needle case. And this is a blunt tip um, tapestry needle and this is bent and it just it doesn't have to be bent it doesn't even have to be blunt tip but it's easier to um, I knew that was gonna happen <laughs> what was I gonna say it's easier to um, weave in ends do the Kitchener stitch and sew on buttons with a blunt tip because you don't want to sew into your stitches in this case you want to go through them and so the blunt tip helps with that and um, what else and last but not least we're gonna need buttons yay <laughs> I love buttons I love cardigans I love buttons there's so many amazing buttons you can find out there and we will be going on a button hunt uh, whether it will be an actual or a virtual button hunt I don't know yet but we will be going on a button hunt for our uh, for my sweater that I'm knitting with you guys uh, in in the later episode. Um, you will need six or seven buttons unless you decide to make the sweater longer or you want more or less space between your buttons, um, in which case, and I mentioned this in the notes, how to figure out how many buttons you're gonna want. But if you're gonna knit it according to the pattern, you will want six to seven buttons, six or seven buttons. Okay, and then of course the next page, and in other patterns it would be the next and subsequent pages, contains the actual pattern. And we will start, I write my patterns so that you start with the body and then it, I encourage you to make the sleeves. However, when I actually do the knitting, I often knit my first sleeve as a secondary gauge swatch and we'll talk more about that um, in the next two episodes. And measurements. Now, I don't want you to freak out. Honestly, please, please don't freak out about your measurements. Your measurements are between you and your notepad or your dress form or nothing. You don't have to write them down, but you do need to know your actual measurements, what, um, what size you are in, so that you can knit the right size. Because if you don't knit the right size, you're, you're kind of messing yourself up from the very, very beginning. And the great thing is it's nobody's business but your own. There are no tags in hand knits that say the size you are and who gives a damn about the number, right? Sorry, <laughs> I shouldn't say naughty words, but it really, really, it's nobody's business but your own. Your measurements are just part of who you are. There are parts that we all like and parts that we don't. As you all now know, I think, I am short-waisted. So Jane and I are different from here to here. Um, and there's nothing I can do about that, except I can knit my sweaters to be the length that hits me in the right spot. And that's the important thing. The important thing is how it looks on your body and how great it makes you look. One of the great things about this sweater is the V-neck and it really draws your eye up along with those princess seams and brings it up, brings the focus up to you because you are wearing the sweater. The sweater isn't wearing you. So take your measurements, honestly, look at the schematic, Think about how much ease you want. Um, it may be easiest to start with zero ease and that way you're not gonna be worrying too much. If you really can't do it and you need positive ease, I say please only like no more than two inches because 
you want the fabric to skim your body. You don't want it to hang off your body. It's not fun. I mean, it may be fun for you, but I think you can look great um, if you have a sweater that fits. And <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back next week with episode two, where we will be talking all about the yarn. We'll talk about swatching, choose a little more on choosing yarn. Um, we'll talk about needle choice and how different needle substances can affect your gauge. So start as you mean to go on, choose the needle that's going to work for you when you're swatching and when you're doing your project. Don't swatch with one needle and switch to another. It can change things. So I will be doing my swatch ahead of time. You may want to wait and watch episode two before you start doing your swatch as I will try and give you a few extra tips and tick tricks that will make your swatch even better, which in turn will make your sweater even better. I highly recommend swatching. I know it's not as much fun as the actual knitting, but do it in a day. Just make a small one, wash it, and get to know your fabric, your yarn, your fabric, your needle, and then you won't have any surprises down the line. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. Um, the best place to go is probably the thread in my Ravelry. Ravelry group, Kathleen Dames Knitwear Design. And uh, because there are a bunch of us knitting this, other people might be able to answer the question even before I can. But if you are stuck, feel free to send me a message on Ravelry. I'm Pearly, P U R L Y, um, or reach out to me on social media. I'm on Twitter at Kathleen Dames. I'm on Instagram at Kathleen Dames. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook um, <coughs> page, Kathleen Dames Design. The best place to go probably to find all the ways to get me is to just go to kathleennames.com. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do. When I get to 100 uh, subscribers, I can then get my vanity uh, URL, youtube.com slash kathleennames. So help me get to 100, please. I really appreciate it. It'll also make it a lot easier for everyone to find me and for you to link to me on social media, which you should definitely do. And don't forget to tag your projects on social media with the hashtag KD sweater or Solstice Cardi. And be sure to set up a project page on Ravelry so we can all see your beautiful sweaters and your progress. So join me next time for episode two, Friday, January 15th. Until then, thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting. Bye.